The Whispering Cloth, written by Peggy Dietz Shea. Refugees like the Hmong people featured in The Whispering Cloth are people without a homeland. Often facing death because they look different or have different beliefs, refugees flee their countries for a better life. Unfortunately, it may take refugees many years to find a country that will accept them. The Whispering Cloth takes place in Ban Vinai, a refugee camp near Chiang Khan, Thailand. The camp has housed Hmong since 1976. Using deadly gas, poison nails, and ground and air strikes, the Lao communist government has driven the Hmong out of Laos for fighting alongside American soldiers during the war in Vietnam and Laos. Bon Vinai closes completely in 1995. Tens of thousands of refugees will be moved to other camps and eventually repatriated to Laos against their will. Many Hmong children may never know freedom. Story begins. After Mai's cousins moved to America, Mai passed the days with Grandma at the widow's store, watching the women do Pan Dao story class. She loved listening to the widows stitch and talk, stitch and talk, mostly about their lives back in Laos and about their grandmother's lives in China a hundred years ago. All Mai could remember was life inside the refugee camp, where everyone seemed to come and go but her. Mai, came Grandma's crackly voice. Put cousin's letter away. The words will disappear if you read them one more time. Come, help me with the Pan Na borders. But I don't know how. Grandma threaded a needle and wrapped her hand around Mai's. Push the needle up through the cloth, Grandma instructed, and poke it back in when it has gone the length of a grain of rice. For many weeks, Mai practiced stitching, stitches that were short and straight, ones that looped inside others, ones that twirled into long strands, and stitches that looked like dots. Beautiful, praised Grandma, amazed at my skill. You are ready to go on. Grandma then began drawing herbs and animals on the Pan Dao borders for Mai to embroider. By the end of the hot season, Mai was drawing and stitching her own border designs, vines of milky jasmine, bursts of purple orchid, palm trees plump with papaya. Hurry and finish, Mai, Grandma said one day. The traders will be coming soon from Chiang Khan. How much will they pay for the ones I helped on? Mai asked, nodding her last stitch. Twice as much as the others, Grandma bragged. You sew even better than your mother did when she was alive, and her pan dao were prized throughout the hills. Pang, 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 ma, the traders complained when Grandma demanded five hundred Thai baht for her pan dao. But when they saw the fine detail of the borders, the traders agreed to pay 400 baht, twice the usual price. Keep stitching, my grandma said when the traders left, and we'll fly from this camp before the rabbit breeds again. Mai's hands went back to work on the borders, but her eyes and ears were drawn to the tribal stories the women stitched inside the borders. Every time the wind rippled, the Patton Dow hanging at the widow's store, Mai heard the words in the air. Grandma, I want to do a whole Pan Dow myself, she said finally. Can you give me a story? If you do not have a story of your own, you are not ready to do a Pan Dow. Mai tried for days to think of a story she could stitch, but all the good ones were already whispering around her. One night, Mai's fingers cramped so much she couldn't sleep. Grandma lay down on the mat beside Mai and folded her and rubbed her hands. Grandma's soothing made Mai remember how she had slept when she was little, snug as a banana in a bunch. Snug with her mother behind her, her father in front of her. Mai's liver quip, lip began to quiver. I want my mommy and daddy, she cried softly. I know, I know, Grandma said. Call to them, Mai. Call their spirits with the words in your fingers. Mai closed her eyes and tried to picture her parents. Flashes, noises, smells bombarded her. A story was erupting in her head, a story she could stitch. Little Mai slept between her mother and father, who were very beautiful, even though blood dripped from their heads. Grandmother put Mai in a basket on her back and ran through the paddies to the riverboats. Soldiers fired, 
Bullets whistled over the people's heads and made rings in the brown Mekong. On the other side of the river, soldiers in different clothes took them to a crowded village inside a tall fence. People stood in long lines to get little bags of rice and dried fish. Mai grew taller. She passed the days watching the blacksmiths make knives and tools. Sometimes she pounded balls of silver into flat sheets for the jewelry maker. She helped grandmother grow chilies and coriander. Mai searched for empty glass bottles. When she put them upside down in the ground around her hut, they sparkled. This is how Mai lived for many years. Mai finished her pandao as the rainy season was ending. Grandma, how much will the traders pay for my pandao? Enough to fly to America? Grandma ran her fingers over the needlework. Then she took the pandao by the corners and held it up to the breeze. She turned her head so that her good ear grazed the stitches. After a long time, she whispered, The traders will offer nothing. Nothing? Mai cried in frustration. The pandao tells me it has not finished its story, Grandma replied. But I have nothing left to tell. Grandma squinted, pushing yellow through the eye of a needle. There is always more threat. Mai grabbed her pandao and ran through the muddy lanes of brown huts all the way to the camp border. There, rainwater gushed freely through the barbed fence and joined a stream beyond. Mai stood in the water and let it wash over her feet. She stared out past the fence for a long time. Then she sat down on the bank and began to stitch. One day, Grandmother and Mai flew inside an airplane. They glided softly above boxes of land to a village where homes were as big as mahogany trees. Mai and her cousins built men with white crystals, swam in curling salt water, read books with beautiful pictures. And at night, Mai snuggled with grandmother in a yellow bed with a silky roof. Many days later, Mai rejoined the women at the widow's store and showed them her finished pandao. It's very fine, grandma said. I like the bed with the roof. How much will the traders give me? It is worth much. What do you think? Mai picked the pandao, but the wind blew it back against her. The short, rough stitches of her father's hand stood up from the cloth to stroke Mai's chin. She tried to speak, but the smooth stitches of her mother's cheeks hushed her lips. Mai? Grandmother nudged her. How much? Nothing. Mai whispered, clutching the story cloth. Nothing? The pandao tells me it's not for sale. The end.